Welcome back. We were discussing the topic of work posture. In the previous segment, we discussed some anatomy related to work posture, the role of facet joints and the intervertebral disc and ligaments and muscles that are attached to the backbone in maintaining a good posture. In this segment, we will discuss some guidelines and principles related to work posture. And these are the references uh, you can consult for more details on this topic. In this lecture, we will try to understand some basic guidelines and principles related to work posture. Uh, we will discuss basically seven principles with the help of uh, examples. First principle is work in neutral posture. That is perhaps one of the most important principles. Second is keep everything in easy reach, work at proper heights, provide clearance, allow for alternate postures, visual requirements must match workers' abilities and maintain stable posture. And of course, this is not the exhaustive list. These are not the only principles of uh, maintaining a good posture. You can, you can think of some others as well, but perhaps these are the most fundamental principles. First principle is work in neutral posture. So a question that immediately arises is what is a neutral posture? So the answer is it depends upon the body part that you are talking about. So for example, with respect to back, especially when we are talking about the seated posture, the neutral posture means the natural S curve is maintained, the S curve of your backbone. With respect to neck, and trunk, they must be in proper alignment. They must be uh, sort of uh, not exactly straight, but uh, maintaining a zero degree angle, almost zero degree angle with the, uh, with the vertical plane. But we will see that actually these neutral postures are not hardly defined. So it's, it, it varies. The definition of neutral posture slightly varies, but we can have a broader definition, a broader concept uh, in our minds. With respect to elbows, they must be held naturally at the sides of the body and the shoulders should be relaxed. And with respect to wrists, the wrist should be in line with the forearm. So let's take uh, some, some specific uh, examples related to neutral posture. So with respect to the backbone, we have to maintain the S curve. So here you can link the lumbopelvic mechanism we discussed in the previous segment. S curve should be maintained. So you can see here a standing worker. He is doing some, some work in front of his body. And we have provided some some clearance in front of his body to, to move his leg in front direction and then he can move it in the back direction. So the purpose of this clearance is to, to change the posture and keep the esker uh, in, in its natural orientation. So this applies more actually to the seated work. So back support is very important, especially at, at the lumbar vertebrae in order to maintain and the lordotic curve of your lumbar vertebrae. So you can see that this back support is not straight as such. So it is also making here as well. So this back support should be curved as well, should be sort of at an angle to make sure that uh, this uh, lordotic curve of the backbone is, is maintained. And, and if, if that is not the case, the shape of the curve changes, maybe to C shape in some cases, it also changes to, to inverted V shape in some cases. So in that case, if that poster is maintained for a longer time, then different problems and pain can be caused. So you can observe such posters practically and we will solve some activities as well in the practice session. Keep the neck and trunk in proper alignment. That is um, another application of 
maintaining neutral posture. So you can very easily see in this case that the trunk is bent almost 90 degree with respect to the vertical, same as about the neck. Ultimate load and stress will shift it to the lower back. So we have designed some, some mechanism to tilt this workstation at, at an angle so that you can see the neck and trunk are almost in the neutral posture. And as I mentioned and I repeat that neutral posture for the most time is not necessarily just erect posture. It is slightly forward or in, for some body part it's slightly in the backward position. So this is not recommended, this is much better. And you can see in this figure as well that the trunk is bent and same is about the neck as a whole. So that is making, uh, making a big angle with respect to this vertical. So if, if this posture is held for a longer period, it will cause some problem. And this is very common in practice when using the computers, we sit in the forward flexed position. So stress, as I mentioned in the previous segment, is mostly resisted by your lower back, the lumbar vertebra and the cervical vertebra. And you can again observe the angle that is being made. So we will see the solution of this problem in one of the following slides. But not a proper posture. So neck and trunk are not in neutral posture. Here is another example. So similar problem is there. Big angle, forward bending. In this case, uh, the trunk is in a, in a relatively better posture, but you can see in the previous example we saw neck was flexed, but in this case the neck is, is flexed. Uh, sorry, in the previous uh, example, the neck was flexed and in this case, the neck is extended. It is extended, so it is moving in the backward direction. So hyperextension, as we discussed in our discussion on, uh, on the types of joints and joint movements. So in this case, you can see the neck is hyperextended and if this posture is uh, maintained for a longer time, it can cause and again, forward bending or flexion, and it can be risky as well. With respect to elbows, elbows should be in and shoulders should be relaxed. So you can see the abduction of the arms, arms are moving away from the body and ultimately there will be stress on the shoulders, especially if there is abduction of the arms as well as if the, if the shoulder is elevated. So this combination is even more painful. So this is a relatively, uh, on the right side is a relatively better option. Uh, you can see there is no abduction of the arms as well as the shoulder is not elevated. So this is a relatively neutral posture, much better than the previous one. And once again, you, you can't see exactly the Abduction, but you can imagine there is some some abduction, and you can see there is the lower arm is not in the proper angle. It should be sort of straight, but it is it is bent, and ultimately the shoulders are elevated, and that will also cause stress on different joints. With respect to wrists, the wrist should be making zero degree angle with your forearm. So this is your wrist, this is your forearm. So both are in the same plane. That is the neutral posture of the wrist. But practically we are either having ulnar deviation or radial deviation. And this is very common in using uh, computer keyboards. So conventional keyboards actually result in either of these and deviations. The same applies to the design of hand tools, but here we have better design. So you can see the wrist and the forearm are straight in the same plane. And we will discuss that this is uh, the example of cylindrical grip. So that is suitable in the case of horizontal work surfaces. And this is 
uh, the pistol grip so that is suitable in the case of vertical surfaces but there are more possibilities as well so we will discuss in these grips in the topic of design of hand tools but both are actually uh, helping the user maintain neutral posture so both are uh, appropriate postures now we will discuss some practical implications of working in neutral posture and there is a very common misconception and that is a rule of thumb called 90 degree 90 degree 90 degree that means that there should be a there should be 90 degree angle between corresponding body parts for example when sitting there should be a 90 degree angle between trunk and thigh and 90 degree angle between thigh and lower leg and so on however it is not uh, the human body is not rectangular and does not necessarily work best at 90 degree angles the neutral posture of the various joints of the body are much more irregular than simply 90 degree so this is what we used to have this idea that the seat should be straight, the back should be straight, the, the seat itself should be straight. So as a result, the back of the user and the thigh should be making 90 degree angle and the thigh and the lower leg should also be making 90 degree angle. And this is a tiring posture, this is not a recommended posture because it, it stresses the different joints and muscles unnecessarily so this is an old rule and it is not recommended this is a better option we we should have some flexibility so that there is a greater than 90 degree angle between trunk and thigh and there is also greater than 90 degree angle between thigh and the lower leg but very important that this angle itself is not recommended if it is a static posture. If this posture cannot be changed for a longer time, this is also not recommended, but it is better than the first one. But if it is a flexible posture, I mean, for example, this is a 100 degree angle, for example, but it can be turned back to uh, say 95 and then to 100 and so on. So that will be even better option. So this is what I, I was talking about that change in posture is a must for prolonged working hours. So this user can sit straight at 90 degree angle, can move back, say up to, for example, 110 degree angle, move forward, say up to, up to 80 degree. And same is true about the angle of the lower leg with the thighs. So it can be changed from say again, 80 degrees to maybe, maybe 110 degrees. So that is even better. A principle so that is one of the practical implications of working in neutral posture so 90 degree angle is not ideal and secondly static posture is also not ideal so there should be variation in the posture that should be allowed so same uh, situation here is as well so here you can see that this chair is slightly slanted on the forward forward direction so it is not a straight uh, seat you can slightly see this uh, curve on the on the back of the seat and you can observe that this angle is greater than 90 degree and similarly there is spacing this spacing is also very important so because of this spacing the lower leg can be moved forward so angle between the thigh and the lower leg can be changed and yet another important thing is this desk that is sloping toward the user so generally it must have 10 to 15 degree angle 15 degree is recommended and this this angle of the desk actually helps to keep the neck in the neutral posture because if it were straight flat then and the student should need to flex forward so that flexion as we saw in the case of cell phone use would would uh, result in force on your cervical spine and that would result in tiredness so these are some very basic principles, some forward tilt uh, on the fr uh, front edge of the seat, some curve on the back and uh, this, uh, this desk sloping toward the user and some clearance in front as well as below uh, the seat. So you can see there is some clearance here as well. 
So that is called the thigh clearance. This clearance as well as this clearance on the forward side of the lower leg, all these help in maintaining suitable posture that can be changed uh, if one posture uh, starts to cause tiredness. So good angles plus flexibility in changing the posture. These are two very important principles for, for uh, the design of tasks and workstations. So this is the, the point that I mentioned when we were discussing the lumbopelvic mechanism. So as we know that uh, the curve is something like this, the curve of your, your back. So this, I have drawn it in the opposite direction, but there is some spacing for the last curve. So we do need to provide space on the, on the seat. Then we, we have a lumbar support. So for the lumbar spine, we have a curve and for the thoracic uh, curve, uh, spine, uh, the thoracic vertebrae, we have a curve as well. So this spacing is important as well as this lumbar support. These are two minimum requirements for seated work. If you are providing the thoracic support and, and even the cervical support in some cases, that is um, the ideal. And here from here you can understand better. So this is the spacing for, for the sacrum. And then there is a curve, something like this for for your lumbar uh, vertebrae. And then you can very easily visualize curve something like this for the thoracic vertebrae. And you can again observe some, some clearance. This clearance is very important so that user can move. In the, in the forward direction to change the posture and there is some clearance in front of lower leg as well. For the VDT task or VDU task, sometimes we call them where computers are used. So here are 10 important parameters shown. So again, one is the adjustability of the seat back. The seat back can be adjusted. There is good lumbar support. You can see that is not mentioned here, but there is some spacing for the sacral adjustment as well. And uh, you can see there is, this spacing is also important that there is some gap between the ending point of the thigh and the ending point of the seat. So there should be some, some, some clearance here as well. So pressure hot spots, what we call them, are not generated. Footrest is there as well. And as I mentioned repeatedly that this spacing, I mean, beneath the desk, under the desk, as well in, in the forward direction of the lower leg is also very important. You can see neutral posture of the neck, neutral posture of the, of the trunk, and neutral posture of your lower arm as well. So in standing posture, actually the neutral posture of lower arm is in this direction, just making zero degree angle with the upper arm, but in tasks like this, it is uh, sort of making 90 degree angle with the, uh, with the upper arm. But again, as I mentioned, it, it is not a hard rule. It can have a range around 90 degree angle. And the wrist is also making zero degree angle with the, with the lower arm. And if this, the angle of this screen can be adjusted, that is, that is even better. So these are some very important characteristics for the workstation design for seated works where monitor or display is to be used as well. So these were some um, important applications of the principle of working in neutral posture and that is one of the most important principles related to uh, work posture. The second principle is keep everything in easy reach. This is something we have already discussed in topic of anthropometry. And I, I repeat that the poor posture is for the most time the result of a poor task design. So you can see here there is a, uh, there are two radii. One is normal radius, the radius or normal range. And then there is a maximum radius or maximum range. So the tools that are 
required frequently should be in this normal range and that, that, that they are required less frequently should be in this maximum range and tools that are not required should be outside this range. So this is the horizontal work envelope or reach envelope. We also have a vertical reach envelope or work envelope. We also saw this figure already. So this P is the preferred area and A is the allowed area. So this vertical envelope is especially required once we are planning the uh, the location of controls and displays where the worker is in a standing posture. And of course, for both both these uh, for both these work envelopes, for horizontal work envelope and vertical, we we do need the data of relevant anthropometry. A suitable workstation design so the thing is not in easy reach so this person has to move forward because of this barrier so ultimately this back sport is no more sporting the lumbar uh, spine so it's a bad posture so same thing you can see here that the work parts are too deep in this box so this person has to sort of raise his shoulders and move the arm a lot deep inside this box so there is pressure on, on the on the cervical spine on the elbow joint as well the solution is to make this box tilted so these are you can observe that most of the example that we are seeing are examples of kaizen simple improvements so you can see here that as a whole a better posture can be can be maintained because everything is in, in easy reach. So we have reduced the reach distance. The third principle is work at proper height. So again, we have discussed this principle in the topic on, on anthropometry and we did discuss actually um, some examples. We solved them mathematically as well. So just one more point is that uh, the, set, uh, the work surface height should be set according to the nature of the task. So height is slightly lower than the elbow height in this case for heavy work. It is approximately at elbow height for lighter work and it is uh, slightly above the elbow height for precision work. But generally the object should be placed between your hip and shoulder height. So that is the general rule of thumb, but this height can be changed according to the type of the task. And if you remember the last example that we saw in previous lecture, focused on this type of task. So we, we were actually requiring the height of this uh, desk to be about 10 centimeter higher than the elbow. So depending upon the task, we should decide the height. So you can see this is too much a higher workstation. This is too low. And ideal for most of the standing task is the standing elbow height. We saw also this point in the last lecture that if possible, work surface height should be made adjustable. So we need some mechanism of adjustability so that we can adjust the height according to the height of the users. So we can accommodate majority of the workforce uh, in this case. But we have to decide, of course, the range of adjustability as well as the mechanism of adjustability. The fourth principle is, uh, we have seen it a couple of, uh, times already to provide clearance. Now the clearance can have different forms. So in this case, we needed overhead clearance. So that is not provided. So that can cause injury. It could be the clearance or space for, for your feet. It is called toe space. So if it is not provided, just in this case, uh, the worker has to bend at some angle in the forward direction. 
So for prolonged period of time, that can cause some problem to the spine. So this spacing um, helps this worker stand erect and maintain this neutral posture. So as we saw that clearance can have another form that is the thigh clearance to clearance uh, at the, uh, between the, for example, this thigh and the lower side of the desk. So this clearance is very important so that this user can move forward, adjust the posture as well as this clearance for the lower leg so that posture can be changed at will. So as you saw that uh, clearance can have different forms. Uh, we just saw a couple of examples. The fifth principle is allow for alternate posture. So we have indirectly discussed this principle as well when we discuss the chair design and class furniture design. So this worker basically works in the seated posture but the height of the workstation can be adjusted. It can be increased so that uh, she can work in the standing posture and then back to the seated posture. So adjustable height works surfaces can facilitate effective work. So same is the thing here. We have seen this figure already. So this is the posture that is held for the most, uh, most of the time, but that user can uh, extend the back, can flex as well. So there is no one posture actually that is correct for an eight hour day. So for a prolonged day, one posture cannot be said to be the ideal posture. So a change in posture must be allowed. So that can be allowed by using adjustable task or workstation design. So here you can see again, this worker can sit here on this seat and work and then stand and this this and this worker can also do that and additionally you can see this footrest ha is having a large area so this he can move the feet in either direction to adjust the posture this chair can be moved back and forth as well so there is a lot of uh, flexibility allowed to change the posture so, so the worker can sit or stand or move the leg uh, forward or backward and so on. The sixth principle is visual requirements must match workers' abilities. Very important principle is that visual requirements exceed workers' abilities. Poor postures may result despite careful attention to the furniture design. If the furniture design is appropriate, but the the placement of the task or objects is not appropriate. So the worker has to bend his neck, the user has to bend his neck. So that will eventually disturb whole posture. As we saw that these curves of the backbone are interrelated. So the static loading of the neck muscle may result if, if uh, the head or the neck has to be bent to see a task. So as a rule of thumb, there is a cone of vision that is approximately uh, from straight ahead line of sight to 30 degree below and 15 degree to the left and right. So there is a cone that is formed. So this is the cone in the forward direction, in the front direction of the user, this cone. But there is a similar cone that is formed uh, to the right and left as well. So you can see this is the horizontal plane just uh, in, 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 in front of the eyes of the, of the user and generally it is up to 30 degree on the back on the downward side and you can find slightly different values in books but few degrees on the upper side and for the right and left you can find the values of uh, this cone as well. So this is the Cone for easy eye uh, rotation, but generally works somewhere over here. The task or display somewhere over here is more appropriate. So this is the allowed cone and somewhere in between is the preferred uh, cone. So this principle has also some implications. 
one is again for vdt workers visual display terminal workers so you can just read this is a very important principle so vdt user carrying out editing task document holder should be provided and place orthogonal to the line of sight and adjacent to the vdt screen so this document holder should be at 90 degree to the line of sight so line of sight is in and out in this case right so this is the orientation of this document holder so just at 90 degree to the line of sight and just at adjacent to the to the vdt or or the monitor screen so this configuration produced significant uh, reductions in text editing in one of the studies so it should be vertical this document holder perpendicular to the line of sight and just adjacent to the monitor or where actually the user will be editing the text. Another implication that we have already seen is the about 10 to 15 degree angle of this desk with the horizontal this, this angle. So that angle helps keep the neck straight and avoid flexion of the trunk and neck. So this 10 or even 10 degrees angle of this desk reduces the trunk and neck flexion of seated person engaged in reading and writing. So we saw the example of classroom furniture design. So we had a similar desk with, with a similar, similar angle. So it, it applies to the reading tables and similar tasks. The final principle is main, maintain stable posture what is a stable posture so there are two things one is the center of gravity and other is the base of support so these are two feet of someone standing and just in between is this base of support in the second case the feet are far from each other so this base of support is much wider in this case one foot is in the forward direction and the other is in the backward direction so this is the base of support and in this case, uh, there is sort of diagonal area that is the base of sport. So this is one foot, this is the other foot. The basic point is that uh, this base of sport should be as wide as possible in a certain task. And task design must be such that the center of gravity must lie, with, uh, must lie within this base of sport and as much toward the center as possible. So as wide as possible, this base of support that is formed actually uh, as an area enclosed um, by the area actually between two, between two feet. So this is the area between these two feet and center of gravity of the body should lie within this base of support and as much toward the center of this base of support as possible. So once, for example, we lean forward, so this uh, center of gravity moves forward and forward and once it is outside this boundary, uh, there is a tendency to fall unless uh, the posture is adjusted, otherwise the person will fall. So in order for the body to be stable, the combined center of gravity of the various body parts must fall within a base of support. If this relationship isn't maintained, then a system will be unbalanced. So you can also use anti-fatigue mats to reduce friction, especially if it, is a, if it is a slippery surface. So these mats can be used. They are available with different materials and different designs. And you can also see here, this is almost the base of sport as well in this case. So this foot is in this direction. This is, so this is the base of sport plus some, some mat is being used. Here the base of sport will be sort of rectangular. Here you can also imagine it will be rectangular. So all seem to be stable postures with respect to base of sport plus some anti-fatigue mats can further help in increasing the friction between the shoes and the floor and avoiding unstable posture because of uh, slipping, for example. 
In this segment, we discussed uh, some important guidelines and principles related to the work posture and the takeaways that the, there are two important takeaways. The first is the poor posture is generally the result of poor equipment and workplace design. So that is the main takeaway. People don't habitually adopt poor posture. It is generally the result of poor equipment and workplace design. So where should we start? So the minimum consideration is to design equipment and workplace to avoid extremes. At least extremes should be avoided. Extreme bending, extreme twisting, extreme restrained postures, restrictive postures. At least uh, to start with, extremes should be avoided. Extreme negative postures to say should be avoided. And then we can move to the, uh, toward the ideal situation, toward the ideal posture. So if you have any questions, you can ask during question answer session.